You know, I didn't learn to play their music at all, like bodies or any. Later on, I learned the songs, but it was just kind of like the way that Jonesy attacks the guitar. And I just picked up a guitar and started learning all that. And then figured out there's Johnny Thunders before that, and that's where he was taking this from. And I went, it, went, it was like music school. And then Paul Cook is, I mean, he's the kind of the beginning of modern rock and roll drumming. He's like, it all goes back to, to Paul. And, and the way, I'm a bass player, I'm a rhythm section guy. So Paul is like the engine that, like in, informed rock and roll from 77 on. Learning their songs wasn't really the important thing. It was just listening and taking it all in and then forming your own band and going, you know. I was in the punk scene coming up. In yeah, In Seattle. It was a, a time when um, it was all about in, individuals and individuality and being a freak or whatever, an outsider. And there was a little scene for you and you could go there was a, like a little gig down the street somewhere or downtown that you could go to and it was all ages and then some international bands started to come through. The Clash came through in 79 and there was like a hundred people there. And, you know, we started like 999 came and the jam came and the specials came and the police came. Um, and then there was, you know, U.S. bands started. Of course we saw the Ramones. Everybody saw the Ramones. Um, you can't say the Sex Pistols really without saying the Ramones. But it's the first two, you know? It's the genesis of the whole thing. The punk scene back then and what the Pistols helped generate um, was such a truly special thing that, like, there wouldn't be Guns N' Roses, there wouldn't be Metallica, it's, uh, Ninety Snails, Nirvana, you could just keep going on, Foo Fighters, there wouldn't have been any of that without that.